today I am going to talk about the frequency domain. Now in an earlier video when we started talking about alternating current, I explained what the time domain is. And the time domain is basically what we see on an oscilloscope. In fact, I said that we could call an oscilloscope a time domain voltimeter. Nobody does, but that's a name that describes what it does. Our x-axis shows how the beam sweeps across the oscilloscope with time. Now modern digital oscilloscopes may have a slightly different concept of how this works. In fact, some have the present here and the past sweeps to the left as time goes by. But an old school analog oscilloscope has a beam that sweeps across from left to right. It still gives you the same idea that left is past, to the right is the present. And in the case of a typical analog scope, present goes by the screen and keeps going by again and again. And with some digital scopes, present is to the right edge and the past simply sweeps by to the left. So X is time and then the Y is voltage. So Y is voltage, X is time. So if we go up, we're more positive. If we go down, we're more negative. And to use the oscilloscope, we have to make some adjustments to decide how far a deflection is in voltage wise. So we have to set some knobs to say like a one volt per division. So if I put some divisions across here, I can say each one of those is one volt. And so if I go up, that's one volt, that's two volts. If I go down, that's one volt, that's two volts. And then I can decide where zero is by setting up the scope. Uh, the best one is to set the input uh, selector to ground so that wherever I adjust the beam, that's zero volts. And then I can say, that is positive and that is negative. And if you want to understand that better, be sure to watch my video series on oscilloscopes linked below. The frequency domain, we have the x-axis. Let me draw this again. We have something that we're displaying, whether it's a graph or an actual device, where the x-axis is frequency. And the y-axis is uh, voltage, most likely, but there is a device that not too many people see anymore, but here it is. This is a manually operated volume indicating frequency domain analyzer. And of course, what it is is an old time radio, where if I draw my radio here, there's the on off and volume selector, and there is the channel selector, and I have a display here with some numbers of five. 40, I think is where it starts, to 15 something or other these days. And I have a needle that goes across. And as I turn this knob, it moves that needle from left to right. Left is low frequencies, right is high frequencies. And as I turn that knob and sweep that across, I'm going to hear radio stations. Some will be faint, some will be loud. And I can determine with my ears which ones are louder and which ones are fainter. So I'm analyzing the strength of those radio signals by turning across the dial and so I see lower frequencies and I stop, oh, there's a loud station, there's a louder one, there's a weaker one, and at different frequencies, I am hearing different radio stations. So what that means is, well, for example, if I go right to the middle to 1,000 on the radio dial, that 1,000 means 1,000 kilohertz or one megahertz. That's right smack dab in the middle of the AM radio dial. Now here in Southern California, we have a station called KCEO. It's in the city of Vista and there's four antennas up there and that is transmitting smack dab on 1000 kilohertz. So I use that as an example of smack in the middle of the AM radio dial and other stations will be transmitting at lower frequencies and others at higher frequencies and the filters inside this radio, we can tune across those and hear those different frequencies. So that is an example of using the frequency domain where from left to right is lower to higher frequencies and we have some indicator of what's happening. Now, when it comes to electronic devices, we have a device called a spectrum analyzer and it's basically an oscilloscope, but instead of sweeping by representing time, it has filters in there and as that beam sweeps by, there's a filter in there that's listening to only a particular frequency. So if we can relate this to our AM radio dial, let's say the filter tunes into 540 kilohertz, right there. And if there's anything there, we will get some voltage. 
Maybe a little peek at that radio station. As we sweep across, we hear other radio stations, some loud, some not so loud. And then we get right to the middle at 1,000 kilohertz. So I'm relating the spectrum analyzer to our little radio. And we get some radio stations here and there. And let's say we happen to be in Vista. We're close to that radio station and it gets very strong. And then as we tune by, it gets weaker and weaker. And so the spectrum analyzer, as it sweeps across, synchronizing the beam with the filters, we can see how strong or how much voltage we have at different frequencies. This would be the filters converting the radio wave energy into a voltage that we can show on the display. So basically it's voltage on the y-axis again, but the x-axis is frequency. So that is what the idea of the frequency domain is, and we need to learn about that because we're going to talk a lot about what happens with the frequency domain, because I'm going to make graphs as I explain how circuits work, and I'm going to say, here's something over here, and this is frequency. This is going to be reactance or voltage or whatever happens to be that I'm measuring at the time. And so, for example, if I look at my inductive reactance, as my frequency goes up, my inductive reactance goes up. As I double my frequency, I double my reactance. Capacitive reactance goes the other way around. It starts out very high and then drops down low. It's because it's a reciprocal function, we get a curve instead of a straight line. But there's my capacitive reactance, and here's my inductive reactance. And then we'll look at the impedance, and depending on the circuit, my impedance might do something like this, or it might do something like that, or that, or whatever. D different curves, once again, low frequency versus high frequency, and I will draw these curves with frequency along the x-axis. And going back to radio, one thing that might be interesting to look at the frequency domain, if you go to this website here, you can listen to software-defined radios. This is a number of ham radio operators who have software-defined radios that you can actually connect to and tune in to the ham radio frequencies of the area that they are in. You can pick almost any place in the world, connect to their system, and here's what one of the sites looks like. And so you have a bunch of controls to decide what frequency or band you want to listen to. And one of the features is we have part of that display, which is a spectrograph. of what's happening at different frequencies. And what's happening here, in this case, now, is at the bottom, and as time goes by, the past goes up. But you're seeing how much energy is at different frequencies, and instead of having to sweep along and synchronize with a filter, it shows you the entire spectrum at one time. And so if there's a radio station transmitting, as it transmits, it will leave a trace because it shows what it was doing in the past and what it's doing now. And so we see that go up as time goes by. So this is what's happening right now. And what you see vertically is what happened before and that continually goes up. And if you just see one line, that's probably just a single frequency. If you see a perhaps a broken line, that could be something like Morse code. Sometimes you'll see a strong signal with a bunch of guff on above and below that frequency, that's probably an AM transmission where we have the carrier and then the sidebands, and the sidebands are constantly changing, so you can see all the guff on the sides as the sidebands are changing, and you can move the little marker to there and you can hear what's going on there. Or in other places, you might see something that sort of looks like the guff, it seems to get stronger at one place, like almost looks like there's a carrier there, but not quite. And that would be a single sideband transmission, and you move your marker there, and you hear a bunch of noise. And then you turn on the beat frequency oscillator, or whatever it is that allows you to listen to sideband, and then you can hear the actual voices because it injects the carrier. We'll talk more about that when we talk about radio. But you can see what's going on. You can see if there's something there. Instead of blindly tuning your radio, hoping to find something, you can see where something actually is, and... Wherever there's some activity, you can move your tuner to that point and listen to it. But there we have the frequency domain. In this case, instead of watching the voltage change as we go across and tune the tuner, we see it sweeping along as the present is at the bottom and the past is up, and we see what's been going on over the last few seconds at a particular frequency. So that's what the frequency domain is. So real quickly, frequency domain is where we draw a plot, whether it's on a graph or a spectrum analyzer, 
where our x-axis is our frequency, lower frequencies to the left, higher frequencies to the right, and then our y-axis is whatever it is, and then we can see what happens at lower frequencies and higher frequencies and in between, and analyze things on a per frequency basis. So that prepares us to move ahead and start talking about alternating current and what happens to components when different frequencies are applied to them. to each other and uh, and talking to some uh, stations over here it was uh, it was kind of uh, neat to hear Australia so strong again and I, I didn't try and work any of them I just uh, it was fairly late I just uh, I was just checking 20 to see uh, what the what the conditions were like and I was uh, Emergency with fuel injection as compared to a small carburetor, why would you want to go to fuel injection? No old bold pilot. You know, I remember one year riding my Harley with some friends through the Black Hills of South Dakota during the, the annual Sturgis motorcycle rally, and you know, there's about... If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.